Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Thursday, January 30th, 2020. Please keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is a reading or a message that's dated for the 30th, it doesn't necessarily mean that it absolutely has to resonate at that time. Whenever you are guided to watch this, and it resonates for you, and that's the message for you at that moment. Also keep in mind that this is a general reading, so this is not going to resonate with everybody. Yes? All right, guys. So I'm getting a little bit of a late start today um, just because I had um, I had some trouble this morning, last night into this, this morning. I was having a bit of issue of trouble last night, and that kind of, you know, I, I fell asleep in that energy. And so when I woke up this morning, it kind of bled into this morning. So I needed to take some extra time to really collect myself, to ground myself, to center myself, and really get my intuition open so that I could show up for everyone, yes? So that's why I'm getting a little bit of a late start. But in honor of that, I am wearing my Sorry I'm Late, My Unicorn Was Sitting On Me shirt. <laughs> I love this shirt, it's really cute. Okay, so let's get into the collective message. So your pre-shuffle energies. So far, we're talking to the feminine here, okay? Um, potentially, potentially. I mean, that was the first thing I thought of, especially since we have the Empress, okay? So we could be talking to, to the feminine energies here, but this doesn't necessarily have to be that. Like if you don't, I, I don't know, you don't have to resonate with a twin flame journey or a divine counterpart relationship or situation, <laughs> situationship is what I just heard or something. You don't have to resonate with that to resonate with feminine energy. Everybody, whether you're on a twin flame journey or not, everybody has uh, masculine and feminine or, or divine masculine and divine feminine energy within them. Actually, I will say masculine and feminine because there is a difference between like general masculine energy or general feminine energy and, 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 and divine energy. And, and I want to make sure I want to point out here that it's not, it's not an elitist class. It's not something that's just reserved, or at least the divine category is not something that's just reserved for certain people. Anybody can access it. The thing about it is you've got to do the work to be in that divine energy. That's all it takes, okay? But anybody has access to it. But ultimately, whether you're in that divine category or not, or whether you consider yourself to be in that category, or maybe whether you even want to be in that category or not, ultimately, everybody has masculine and feminine energy within. So either the empress here represents the feminine within you or you as a as a dominantly feminine individual or the the empress just represents fertility and abundance. Okay? So take it as it resonates, but I will say that the strongest thing that I'm getting here is um a divine feminine individual or energy, all right? And so with that, you have the Knight of Cups and the Magician. And on the other side of the Empress, you do have the Page of Wands. Now, the Page of Wands is a messenger. It could also be an energy of rediscovering yourself, um, or, or redefining yourself. I'm hearing also realigning yourself. So there, there could be a situation in which um, you are realigning and I'm hearing, I'm hearing through a toxic situation. So um, maybe you're you're in an energy right now where you're coming out of some sort of toxic situation, some sort of toxic energy. Uh, maybe you are in fact getting into the you're getting into the mode of realigning yourself, but this time aligning yourself with the divine category of feminine energy rather than just being in general <laughs> general run of the mill at a feminine energy. And that's not something that I I intend anyone to take offense to. If that's triggering you, okay, then there's something that you got to look at there. But Otherwise, I'm just, it's just for, and it's not to say that anyone is better than, it's not to say that divine energy is better than general energy. It's not. It's just literally a mindset. It's a classification. It's a way of living. It's a way of presenting yourself. It's a way of showing yourself. And to be quite honest, the divine category is a, is, is a much purer form. It's a much higher vibrational form. It's a much more form. It's a much more true to your inner self or your higher self form of energy okay okay but what this is what this is saying to here is i really feel like the feminines here are really manifesting a partner a soulmate maybe even a message 
And I guess what I'm what I'm getting with this is to stay in alignment with the, the strongest message that I'm getting for the feminines out there is you need to remain in receptive mode. You really need to just sit back, be on your throne, stay in your alignment and allow whatever is destined or meant to come to you to come to you. There's no need to push. There's no need to chase. There's no need to run. There's no need to beg, question, ask. Just remain in your alignment because in, in you remaining in your alignment, you're naturally allowing things to manifest or come to you, the, you know, in the, for the highest good of yourself and all involved is what I'm hearing as well, okay? That is, yeah, that is a good message to start with. I just heard that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Five, five, five. All right, cool. So, oh, 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 oh. The other thing that I wanted to say about that was, excuse me, there could be an energy where you're in, a, you're realigning with a new divine partner or a, a new soulmate or something like that. Oh, okay. I mean, that that's, a, that's entirely possible, but also... <laughs> Jeez. Also, um, that's not something that I really want to go into because, and Spirit's really not allowing me to go into that because it's really not important. What's most important about this message is just to remain in your alignment, remain in your sense of self. Oh yeah, see? The Ace of Cups is underneath the Empress. Um, stay in your alignment and make sure to focus on the fact that you hold unconditional love for yourself, which allows you to hold unconditional love for all others, which really puts you in the best alignment to bring forward that, forward that offer of love with this Knight of Cups, okay? All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So let's, let's reshuffle here. Let's... Yes, and the lovers did pop out. The lovers did just show itself to me a little bit here. So, okay, yeah, all right. Divine partnership. Divine matchmaking, allowing the universe to play matchmaker here and remaining in your detachment from a specific outcome or a specific timeline or even a specific person. Remaining true to yourself, remaining self-sufficient, self-reliant, and just happy and content in your own skin allowing yourself to be who you are, to shine brightly, and to not give a damn what other people have to say about it. <laughs> yes, honey, I will drink to that. <laughs> mm. All right, cool. So let's give this one more shuffle here. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to dive into this a little bit for you because and I'm, 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 I'm saying this because I want to, I'm trying to lead by example here. Part of my issue this morning was there was this sudden shift within me in which it was literally like a snap of a, it, well, it felt like it was at the snap of a finger, but it actually, now that I think about it, it kind of built up over the, the later part of my day yesterday. But I kind of slipped into a queen of swords energy and I was really kind of like, saying i need space i need i need to just be left alone right now like and you know messages were coming through and it was it was kind of bombarding me and i couldn't it, i couldn't get it out of my head and i couldn't really get away from it and so at the by the end of my night and by the end of my day because I, I i was like i just like i need you to just leave me alone like go away i'm not i'm not going anywhere but i need space i need you to leave me alone and it kind of slipped a little further to where all of a sudden now I was feeling like the connection that I that I have with this counterpart my twin flame and it, it's like it, it shifted completely out of nowhere it had just changed and it was the exact opposite to what I had what it had been what it had always been over the last two years even when i was in my last year the energies last year where i was dealing with all the resentment and the anger and i wanted to just desp i just wanted to get away from it and i didn't want anything to do with it it was it, it was almost as if i didn't love him anymore which made absolutely no sense because there was I, it's like there's there's no way i could just flip a switch and all of a sudden just not love this person anymore given how strong of a connection it has been for so long, right? So when I woke up this morning, I was still kind of in that energy and I was really questioning things. And 
I, I I took some time and I got my intuition going and I and I cleared up the space and I got ready. And I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do morning coffee now. And I'm sitting here and as I'm conveying this message to you and I'm speaking on how you know spirit is just saying just stay in your alignment and don't worry about the outcome. They 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 repeat his name in my head again and they say he's the one. You, you know what I mean? So it's like, okay, whatever spirit. So I feel like what's happening for the feminine collective right now, especially if you are on a twin flame journey, what I feel like is happening right now is we are being tested in how true we are to our alignment and how true we are to detaching from a specific person, from a specific outcome, from a specific timeline. And part of my situation that I was dealing with this morning was, I mean, it's fine if it's not, if it's not meant to be him, then that's okay because ultimately it's going to it's going to be somebody i'm not worried about that i've i've built up enough self-confidence where and self-love and self-respect where it's like i'm totally okay being on my own i'm not afraid of being alone forever i know for a fact that that bullshit ego fear that i'm never going to align with someone that and no someone's never going to get me that's all just bullshit i mean that's not even close to anywhere near the truth but okay so if it's not him then it's not him i i, I don't mind I, I, in honesty i don't even really care but what was mind-boggling was the fact that it just shifted like that all of a sudden it was like i didn't love him anymore which didn't make sense to me that was really suspect you know what i mean and it's not like i don't love him i do love him it's just i'm i'm really detached from it Like I love him and I want to be with him, but I don't have to be with him. Do you, do you get what I'm saying? So stay, so I guess, so that, that, that's something that I'm going through right now. I, I wonder if there are others of you going through that. Um, maybe you may go through that coming up in the future, but. So the message from the pre-shuffle is to stay in your alignment, you know, be the badass that you are, be the spiritual badass that you are, be the divine feminine energy that you've been working so hard towards being that you are and don't give a damn about any, but anything else allow the universe to handle it if the person is going to align with it then the person is going to align with it if they don't then someone else will take their place i mean it's really that simple and yeah at first that was kind of triggering for me like back when i was in the very heat in the beginning of the situation that was really triggering for me it's like how could how could you possibly line me or or, or cross paths with have me cross paths with someone only to find out that it's not going to work or it's not going to happen. But now it's at a point where it's just like, well, hey, <laughs> whatever happens, happens. <laughs> but that comes from that really, that really does come from building that self-confidence and really mastering that energy of being the empress, embodying that divine feminine energy. And for those of you that are more on the masculine side, the same goes for you. Embody that full full-on divine masculine energy and you will align with a counterpart if that is truly what you desire you keep in mind guys that the universe is not in the business of telling us no it's only in the business of aligning us with that which we truly desire and that which is going to serve our highest good you can man manifest anything you want kids you can okay here we go. Let's get into the rest of the reading here. Yeah. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Thursday, January 30th, 2020. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this five shuffles here. Um, I do want to say, though, that what I was seeing for the collective this morning, uh, earlier while I was doing the pre-shuffle energies, this is two, I was seeing purple, and I was getting a very much, very much a high priestess energy 
from that purple. And the high priestess energy was giving me that mystery, that higher order. It's like there are things happening beneath the surface that you are in fact not aware of and you're probably not going to be made aware of. So you really need to, this is, this is really a perfect time for the feminines out there, even for the masculines out there that are watching this. You can take this too, but look at it from a masculine point of view. So while I'm saying for the feminines out there, you need to really step into your empress power, your empress energy, and remain in your alignment there. Masculine, you could do that too. You step into your divine mass, your, your emperor, excuse me, your emperor energy, your emperor power. Remain in the highest vibration of these emperor or empress powers and maintain your vibration, maintain your alignment there. That's really all you need to do. Let the universe take care of the rest for you. Okay? That's really all you're responsible for, your alignment. This is three. Oh, speak of the devil. Look, there's a high priestess right there. <laughs> okay, this is four. And five. All righty, kids. Let's see what else we have for today. Okay, bear with me, kids. We're the collective here. Oh, okay. Thursday, January 30th, 2020. Okay. Ooh, boy. All right. Oh, Lord. <laughs> okay. Overall energy, we have the Five of Cups. Well, would you look at that? Look at who popped out now. Overall energy is the Five of Cups with death. Would you look at that? Look at who we have here. The Emperor, the Star, the High Priestess. We have the Chariot in reverse. We have the Wheel of Fortune and we have the Ace of Cups. We also have the Page of Wands and the Eight of Cups, but the Page of Wands and the Eight of Cups are in reverse. All right, Masculine, so we're talking to you now. And you guys have been in this Five of Cups energy for some time. What I'm getting with this is you're still kind of healing, you're still kind of dealing, you're still kind of going through some sort of transformation because you have, you do have death here, okay, which is talking about a transformation. This could be an old way of life, this could just be your circumstances, this could be more internal than external also. And then you have the Five of Cups here, but you also have, on this side of the Five of Cups, this is kind of like a rebirth energy or like a resurrection. It's like after... You know, this, because the Five of Cups is an energy of regret, remorse, shame, guilt, sorrow. It can, if it's, if you, if you, if you remain in this energy for too long, it can sour and it can turn into like a situation where you're just crying over spilt milk and you got to just pick yourself up and start moving on. But the, one of the main messages from the Five of Cups is the fact that all is not lost here because you have, sure, you do have three cups that have spilled out, but then you have two cups that are still standing. And what I'm hearing with this masculine is the relationship still stands. There is even a new there's like rebirth, regrowth here. And this is kind of an energy of a re I do kind of see this as a, a representation of rebirth. And also I want to say what the tears that you've cried, whatnot, whatever, or the emotion that has spilled out, the, you know, the emotion that has been flowing from whatever this is for you has watered the, this, this flower. Is this a rose? Yes, it's a rose. Uh, so, so maybe the relationship between you and your feminine or your empress um, has turned a new, has taken a new turn, has has resurrected in some new way. You have the star with the high priestess, the ace of cups, the wheel of fortune, the chariot is in reverse. You also have the eight of cups and the page of wands. Those are also in reverse. The page of wands was in the pre-shuffle with the empress. 
So masculines, there are some of you out there that are still hesitating from walking away from some sort of situation that no longer serves you, some sort of way of life, something like that. However, I do feel like you are taking steps to do so. There's a blockage, sure. You're, maybe you're not quite ready, sure. You're not quite there yet. Maybe there, there are some loose ends that you need to tie up. I'm looking at the chariot in reverse here, and I'm just getting an energy of fear. Fear of moving forward, fear of taking some sort of leap of faith, fear of leaving something behind you. There's a message that wants to be delivered here. There's a message that wants to be sent. Now, with the Page of Wands in reverse, there are some people that read this as a bad news situation. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, a bad news or not favorable news. So it could be, okay, so for some of the, for some feminines out there, this could be an energy where it's like the bad news right now is that the masculine yeah, probably isn't going to move forward anytime soon. And I just heard when he wants to. Well, okay. When he wants to, all right. All right. But see, if feminines, if that's triggering for you, then this is a perfect time for you to really step into the alignment of, what. well, shit, whatever happens, happens then. If he doesn't want to do it, then he doesn't want to do it. That's fine. It's not going to ruin my world. It's not going to ruin my day. I have plenty to do. I have plenty to focus on. Or I have plenty of other people that could potentially fill his space in a much better way. So... Interestingly enough, though, what I just heard is why give up on it? Well, no one's giving up on anything. It's not where, and you're not, see, here's the, okay, and sure, okay, so, so for the masculine here, for the emperor, um, your reassurance is that if, you're, if your counterpart, if your feminine is staying in her high priest, um, well, okay, high priestess energy, maybe, but if she's staying in her empress energy, then she's not giving up on the situation. But she's remaining in, al in, in alignment with who she is and where she's headed, and she's remaining detached. And even still, especially if she's sitting in the true, stronger aspects of the Empress, she still loves you unconditionally. She's not trying to force you into anything. She's not trying to make you do anything that you're not ready or willing to do. It's not like she could anyway. It's not her place to do so, but that's not even the way she's thinking about it. It's like, well, hey, again, whatever happens, happens. But if you're in that true, if you're in that true divine feminine empress energy, you're also connected to the abundance here. And so it's not like you're missing out on anything. Now, here's the thing, because the high priestess has come out here. Okay, so... Again, what I was getting when I was seeing the purple energy and when I started the reading... And when I was like pulling the pre-shuffle and I was feeling like this was the secrecy of the high priestess was coming through here. There's a higher order. There's, 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 there's a higher power involved. I mean, obviously we know that. But if, if y'all have been connecting with me on this channel for long enough, we all, we all can at least agree on the fact that there's a higher power at work here. Okay. Whether you want to believe it to be God, source, creator, the universe, or just your higher self. There is a higher intelligence that is involved here, that is that is pulling things together, that is making things happen. And so, for the feminines here, especially with the star, there is an there is an element of needing to have faith because it is coming through. And this is exactly why you need to stay in your alignment. All you need to do is stay in your alignment with your highest self, with your the highest alignment that you can muster at this at any given moment to remain primed for the universe to allow things to align for you, to allow yourself to align with that higher partnership or whatever it is you're looking at, looking for. I, even though when we were saying with the page of wands in reverse and the eight of cups in reverse and the chariot in reverse, especially with the page of wands in reverse, potentially for some readers being bad news, 
I don't think this is a bad omen. To be honest with you, what I'm feeling here, the strongest thing I'm feeling here is just that this is either delayed or it's in the works. Sometimes, I mean, like a, a reversal in a card can mean blockage, uh, maybe one of the more negative aspects of the card. Um, maybe even refusal to do something, sure. But also as a reader, for me, it could potentially be not necessarily a blockage, but the fact that something is in the works here. It's not quite ready yet. I really do see this as, and maybe I'm just being, I'm trying to look at the bright side. Maybe I'm just being optimistic, but also there's no reason to be pessimistic here. That's not going to help anybody, <laughs> right? So I see this as a potential. I see something is coming. There is a message coming here, leaving the past behind in some way, moving forward in a balanced manner from a heart-centered place with the chariot here. I mean, something is coming. You have the Wheel of Fortune, which is representative, which has the magician on it, okay? Stay in your alignment. Just stay in your alignment. That's all you need to do. And someone in, in, in a divine counterpart, a masculine energy will be aligned with you. Masculine, the same goes for you. Because I know, I mean, mostly the, those that watch me and other readers here, we're of the feminine energetic makeup, right? But I do have masculines that are watching. And there are even women that are out here that are ma more masculine in energy. So, in, so, okay, so, but the same message goes for you. Remain in your highest alignment. That is the control that you have over this situation. Your own alignment. Okay. All right. This is good, guys. Don't get me wrong. This is really good. It's challenging, sure. It's challenging, but it's good. Let's get some clarification. I want to start... Yes, I'm going to start here. I want to get some clarification on this. The Emperor, the Star, the High Priestess, the Ace of Cups, and the Magician. Now, someone could be watching you. I just want to say, creepy stalker status here. And this could be the mask. I do, I, I do, in many cases, I feel like this is the masculine. You see this, this dude right here? You could even see this as the Knight of Cups, which came out in the pre-shuffle. Now, the other thing about this Ace of Cups here is... Um, this this could speak to a little bit of illusion. It's a nighttime energy, so things are not always as they seem. So you could take that you take it any way you resonates, right? Either maybe you're wrapped up in something that isn't as isn't really truly what it seems, or what you're seeing in the in the physical is not a true expression of what's really going on underneath the surface. There's more to than meets the eye here. Ultimately, though, you have got to stay in your alignment with it. Fuck what reality says. Fuck what the 3D has to say about it. What does your heart say? And that was what I was hearing this morning when I was really struggling with trying to understand what was going on for me. I kept hearing, trust your intuition. Trust your intuition. And if you're having, if you're really having trouble getting a clear message or deciphering what's going on or, or feeling connected, truly connected to your intuition, like you're not getting any sort of interference. Because I feel, I do feel like there was a ton of interference coming through this morning, even from last night. And, it, and I'm going to be honest with you guys, it really could have been the fact that I slipped so heavily into that Queen of Swords energy that I kind of I, I kind of attracted some negative entities towards me that were just feeding off of that energy and just wanted to keep me in that kind of angry Queen of Swords energy, right? So then when I got up this morning and I was still having trouble, you know, connecting with my intuition, I felt like there was interference. I meditated for a while and I did a violet flame meditation and it helped a great deal. Okay. So think about it that way. If you're really having trouble understanding what's going on or feeling connected to your intuition, make sure that you take the time to clear that up and get back into alignment. Okay. Okay. 
So let's, let's look a little deeper into these energies here. We have the Emperor, the Star, the High Priestess, the Ace of Cups, and the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, I do, I do think collectively we're experiencing some sort of interference because guys, it doesn't like, it didn't make logical sense. And I understand you can't really, you can't really be logical, <laughs> too logical, at least when it comes to like spirit and the chaos of creation and all that stuff. There's a higher consciousness that is in control here that our three dimensional minds can't even be, are not designed to make sense of. But just the way that things just flipped, just switched like that, it was like that, th that is sus. That is all kinds of sus. <laughs> like, I'm cool with things shifting and changing. I'm okay with the change. And if I fall, and if ultimately we move into a situation where he and I are no longer vibing like this, and it really is, like, it really does become a situation where it's like, okay, I'm aligning with a new counterpart, then that is fine. But the way that that shifted did not add up so in a sense the queen of swords energy that i was in was really helpful because it was discerning ding 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 you see you see gotta love it last shuffle and then we will look let's look into this here what um what can we understand more let's let's understand this a little bit more here what Well, shit. After all that, the Two of Cups comes out with the Five of Wands. So for the masculines here, this is really challenging. This is really challenging. There is a lot of external input. There also could just be a lot of internal inner battle. Yep. Because then you have the Five of Cups here. Five of Cups, Five of Wands. Masculines, you're still... Mm. Yikes. Okay, you want a little bit of tough love? I'll give you a little bit of tough love. I feel like you're crying over spilled milk here. I think you just need to buck up and do something about it. I'll go so far as to say, grow a pair of balls and do something about it. And I mean that in a loving way, because at this, I, I mean, I, I do, I promise you, I mean that in the most loving way possible. But at this point, guys, you've got to just put on your big boy pants and, and make some moves, take some action. You are, oof, whoa, okay. You are the masculine, aren't you? You are the emperor, aren't you? Isn't masculine energy all about taking action? Then what the hell are you sitting around crying over it for? I mean, don't get me wrong. Please feel through your emotions. Please honor your emotions. I mean, that is absolutely necessary. But like, at some point, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do something. I love you guys. I love you all to the ends of the earth. I want you to be happy. I want you to be successful. I don't want you to sit and wallow in your own shit like this anymore. I want to get a little bit more on this for you. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait and I'm going to get I'm going to get um, Spirit's take on that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here and we're going to look at this right now. Because this looks like the action that the masculine wants to take here. Eight of Cups, walking away from something or walking towards what would be more fulfilling for them. Being in touch with your inner child and following your heart and going after some dream that you have. I mean, look at the star here. Wishing upon a star, right? A dream come true. But in order to do that, masculine, you're going to have to walk away from some things that no longer serve you. You're going to have to at least make some sort of move 
to get to that two of cups to complete your 10. Even if you're not walking away from things completely or it's not necessary to walk to make some big change and walk away from a bunch of stuff, you still have to make a move towards that two. You still have to go get that last two cups to complete your 10, okay? All right, so let's look at this now. Let's get a little bit, let's dive a little bit deeper in this. Let's get a little bit of a deeper understanding of this for you. Eight of Cups, Page of Wands, the Chariot, all in reverse. Stop here, okay. All right, well, look, there you go. There's the indecisiveness with the Two of Swords. Okay, Hanged Man, Knight of Wands, Nine of Cups, King of Swords. Wow. Okay, so we're going from the eight to the nine masculine. But what is what is required of you is to change your perspective, the hanged man, and look at things clearly, truly as they are. King of swords. It's time for you to stop allowing your emotions to overwhelm you. And I understand that for some of you, this is a challenge because maybe you're just now getting into the realm of emotion or you're just now starting to feel through your emotions or get connected with your emotions. So, okay, please excuse my harshness if that is you. But again, if you want tough love, I got some tough love for you and that's it. I mean, that's the queen of pentacles in me, okay? The queen of pentacles is very much about tough love. She's very loving, she's very compassionate, and she is absolutely there for you. She is down for you. Like she will be your ride or die, but you have got to show up and do your part too. And she's not gonna sit around and watch you, watch you wallow in your own self-pity. She is not gonna have that, okay? That's definitely the queen of pentacles in me. But you've got to see this clearly. You have got to well, first of all, you've got to take the blindfold off and you've got to let your mind, you got to stop your mind from trying to distract you. Because you, what I'm seeing here, with, the, with especially with the crows on this, it's like you have all these thoughts that are coming at you left and right. And, and you, you got you to gotta quiet your mind. You've got to silence your ego. You've got to calm your mind. You've got to still your mind. You've got to look at things from an objective point of view. You've got to see things as they truly are. And you've got to work on changing your perspective here. And the strongest thing that I'm getting for this masculine is you've got to change your perspective in how things are going to turn out or in relation to the past of the situation and how things went then. As long as you learn from it, masculine, all you have to do is try to apply something new to the situation. Maybe you might fail again. Maybe you might not get it right away. But as long as you're trying, as long as you're making the effort, Knight of Wands, moving forward with what you're passionate about, moving forward with this activation, giving it the good old college try, that's really all that matters here. It might take you a few steps you might stumble a little bit no one is expecting you but see that's a common misconception and i think that's what's really tripping you up here masculine no one is expecting you to be perfect right away no one is even, even really expecting you to be perfect perfection is subjective and everyone's idea of perfection is different sure we can have some common ground but each and every person's view of perfection is going to be is going to differ slightly which makes perfection subjective so fuck perfection. As long as you've got the message or you're trying to do better, you're, you've learned a lesson and now you're trying to do better, that's really all that counts here. But you have to take the action, Knight of Wands. Your wish fulfillment is on its way. Satisfaction is on its way. You have the nine of cups here. You're going, you see, you see, but you are moving from the eight to the nine. But in order to get to that nine masculine, what do you have to do? Wait, wait, say it again. What do you have to do? Oh, right. Take some action. Not stand still any longer. I feel it. You feel paralyzed. I totally get it. I totally feel it. But you are not paralyzed. You can make a move. Okay. 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 
Okay. <laughs> so with that said, then. With that said, let's talk about this. Let's get into Spirit's Guidance here. We're going to use the Golden Universal Tarot for that. What does Spirit have to say about all this? What is Spirit's Guidance here? Calling on this higher perspective, this higher intelligence of love and light to serve the highest good here. Please guide us here. Please, Spirit, give us the best guidance. What do we need to hear at this moment? Best guidance. They're saying 10 more shuffles. Bear with me. That was one. This is two. Okay, 10 shuffles. Three. Oh, that makes sense. 10 is a number of completion. Okay, Ten, a three. Four. Calling on the higher guidance of love and light, the higher wisdom, the higher perspective, the higher governing power. Five. Please guide us. Please show us the way. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Excellent. All right, Spirit, what do you have for us? Oh, <laughs> oh, the Wheel of Fortune, the Seven of Pentacles. That's all they got. It's all she wrote with the Two of Wands. The choice is yours. You can delay, or you can go with the flow. Seven of Pentacles with the Wheel of Fortune. Trust yourselves is what they're saying. But what I'm getting with the Seven of Pentacles is an energy of you've learned quite a great deal. There is a harvest here to be had. And what I'm getting here is that you literally just have to pick this harvest in order for the circumstance to change. I'm literally getting an image of picking the fruit. I mean, it's right there for you. I'm also getting an energy of karmic change because of lessons learned. But you still have to make a choice to go for it. You still have to make a choice to go after it. There's also, spirit is also reassuring those of you that are apprehensive, those of you that are scared or, or not quite sure that the situation is different. Also, what I'm getting with the seven of pentacles and the wheel of fortune is that the times have changed. People have learned. People have grown. Ha yes, people have grown. So the seven of pentacles, to me, as a reader, can sometimes represent um, Einstein's uh, theory of insanity right or, or or a definition of insanity where it's like you're doing something over and over and over again expecting the same result or i'm sorry expecting a different result well it feels like someone or something ha well yeah someone has come out of that and made some strong change there is more okay well justice no <gasps> the two of cups the nine of wands the damn the ten of cups Okay. Okay. Nine of Swords is at the overall energy. Now, you have the Sun in reverse. You also have that with the High Priestess yet again. You have the Nine of Wands, the Two of Cups, and the Ten of Cups. So, Spirit is saying, we recognize that y'all are battered and bruised. We recognize that you've been through some shit. We recognize that you're really guarded and you're but you're overguarded. Nine of Wands. 
Something is coming together. Your wish fulfillment is right here. This, look at that. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Here, right here, is the two of cups that will complete your 10. It is right in front of you. You just can't see it right now. The sun in reverse, but the sun is here no, nonetheless. And regardless of whether it's reversed or not, and regardless of whatever else is on the table, when the sun comes out, all is good. The sun is the most optimistic card in the deck. Outshines everything. You just can't see it yet. The high priestess. There's a higher power at work. This is even kind of saying, trust us. This is coming directly from source. You have the power within you to make the moves and to make the shifts that you need to, that you want to, that you have always wanted to. You just have to trust in yourself, in the universe, and in your alignment that all is, in fact, well. The sun in reverse can represent, can symbolize disbelief. Wow. Don't let your fear and anxiety get you down, guys. Okay, we're going to get our Oracle Guidance now, and we're going to get it from the Earth Warriors. <sighs> All righty. Let's see what we've got. Last shuffle. Spirit for today's message. Nope. Goodness gracious. Best message, please, Spirit. Woo! There it is right there. Okay. What do we have? Chu J. Oh man. Okay, card number 20. Shaska. Star of Venus. I've never gotten this card before, actually. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay. Shaaska, Star of Venus, supports an inner shift to higher consciousness. Whether or not you consider yourself to be financially skillful, Part of your sacred power and purpose includes the healing of economic and financial matters in your own life and the world. You are meant to experience abundance, creating and sharing prosperity from a place of inner spiritual security. A healing liberation from poverty consciousness allows the universe to work through you more easily without the obstruction of negative conditioning. In a reading, this card says, financial healing is indicated. Let go of fear and trust unconditionally that the universe supports you. What brings you a sense of joy, purpose, and passionate devotion? Focus on that. Believe in your ability to thrive by being and expressing your authentic self. Notice how you relax into flow and more easily attract what you need when you acknowledge that the universe wants you to flourish through being you. Focus on putting your beautiful beliefs out into the world, not in consuming the negativity or fear of others. Give of your spirit abundantly. Nothing is beyond the reach of divine assistance. Trust in this and you can fulfill your purpose of being a positive influence in the world. Yeah, yeah, I definitely wanna read the rest of this. So the spiritual guidance here says, the Oracle of Shaska is the Oracle of Venus, the morning and evening star. She heralds, hold on, let me get that into focus here. You want to focus? Can you focus? There we go. She heralds the transition into a new reality of higher consciousness and healed experience regarding money, financial power, and resources. This Oracle guides you to give up false shame of not having enough or guilt of for having too much. 
Your true worth is a matter of soul and has nothing to do with material things. As you relax and acknowledge the love that the universe has for you, your material reality will unfold with grace and divine support. Place your sense of security not in the amount of money you have, but in the unconditional love and endless generosity that the universe wishes to share with you. Trust that the universe will provide you with all you need to fully live your life. When you are given something, accept it and consult your own heart for how you might share that resource with wisdom. Give yourself permission to stop making financial matters an issue in your own mind. Trust that the universe knows what it's doing and all matters can be resolved according to a loving, higher intelligence. Focus on giving your gifts to the world as generously as you can whilst opening up to receive fully and fearlessly. As a sacred change maker, you are asked to broaden your definition of currency from pertaining only to money to include that which has meaning for you at a soul level. This may include integrity, authenticity, relationship, uh, uh, consciousness, and community. In your relationship with yourself and others, how might you express such a currency of soul? Seek and treasure that which cannot be quantified monetarily. Cultivate and share your experience of true wealth in the best and broadest sense. Some indigenous cultures define this wealth not as how much you acu acu accumulate excuse me, for personal gain, but how much you are able to give in support of your community. This creation and honoring of soul currency does not mean that you are to be denied money or financial healing. It is about placing that in correct context. It shifts fear of lack into trust in spirit. The recognition of soul currency helps unravel an obsession with money, freeing your mind and emotions to be reordered into a more relaxed and open attitude towards financial matters. This, in turn, makes it easier for you to receive the generous flow of abundance from the universe. Seeing wealth as more than money and refusing to make money an indication of success and the worth and the worth of a person is the antidote. Is the, excuse me is the antidote to the wound of separateness. That wound creates selfishness, ignorancy, <laughs> ignorancy, ignorance, jealousy, and greed, stealing from community and depriving future generations their rightful inheritance. This is the conscious economics of bringing people together, not driving them apart. When it is wisely placed within a soulful hierarchy and definition of value, not above it or beyond it, Money can be part of a more full and sacred relationship of exchange, not something that creates division. We feel happier, more connected, and at peace. A spirit of hope, optimism, inspiration, and boldness of belief takes hold of our hearts, and we begin to feed the malnourished souls on this planet with good spiritual food. We no longer wait for the new world. We become it. And it's really interesting that the message would be about money because the masculine when negatively aspect well the masculine energies are very much the master of the physical domain and so they often get wrapped up in finances and physical situations and whatnot whatever so given that this message turned out to be so heavily masculine oriented or for masculines out there it's really, it's perfect. I mean, I really shouldn't be surprised. None of us should be surprised, but it's really quite perfect that this Oracle card would come out this, today. Anyway, there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah, take care. Mwah. Bye.